the JAMA Network. My name is Sherry Boulay, and I'm a health scientist with the Division of Reproductive Health at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We decided to study trends in the use of intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI, in the United States because there has been some evidence that the use of ICSI is increasing um, for cycles where there's no diagnosis of male factor infertility. ICSI use is generally considered a safe and effective treatment in the context of male factor infertility, um, but its use for, for non-male factor infertility hasn't shown a, evidence of a clear benefit in this setting. The objective of this study was to use national surveillance data to look at trends in the use of ICSI over time and also to compare reproductive outcomes including pregnancy rates, live birth rates, miscarriage rates, and multiple live birth rates for cycles where ICSI was used with cycles where conventional IVF was used according to whether or not there was a diagnosis of male factor infertility. For our study, we used data from CDC's National Assisted Reproductive Technology Surveillance System. This is a data reporting system for the federally mandated collection of information on all assisted reproductive technology cycles performed annually in the United States. We restricted the study to cycles where fresh embryos were used because information on ICSI is not reliably reported for cycles using frozen embryos. We looked at trends in the use of ICSI from 1996 through 2012 for all cycles and for cycles where there was a diagnosis of male factor infertility and for cycles where there was no diagnosis of male factor infertility. We then restricted the study to the five most recent years, so that would be 2008 through 2012, and we compared reproductive outcomes for cycles using ICSI versus those using conventional IVF again stratifying by male factor and non-male factor infertility. We found that for all types of cycles, use of ICSI doubled over the study period from about 36% of cycles in 1996 using ICSI to 76% of cycles in 2012 using ICSI. When we stratified by non-male factor infertility diagnosis, we found that the use of ICSI increased fourfold over the study period from approximately 15% to 66% in 2012. We also found that ICSI use was not associated with improved reproductive outcomes, including rates of implantation, pregnancy, miscarriage, and live birth compared with conventional IVF regardless of whether there was a diagnosis of male factor infertility or not. We concluded that use of ICSI has increased over time, um, most notably in cycles where there was no diagnosis of male factor infertility. We also concluded that ICSI was not associated with improved post-fertilization reproductive outcomes irrespective of a male factor infertility diagnosis. Ideally, the next steps would be to conduct randomized controlled trials comparing outcomes for ICSI versus conventional IVF for cycles with certain non-male factor infertility indications, and that would include cycles where there is low oocyte yield or poor oocyte quality, um, unexplained infertility, or older maternal age. Another important next step would be to look at long-term outcomes for cycles where ICSI was used compared with conventional IVF, again restricting to a non-male factor infertility population and particularly focusing on outcomes such as autism and chromosomal abnormalities or birth defects.